In this video, we're going to show you the Dash Ultralight. This is a product by Travel Buggy, a Canadian-based company, but they actually carry a couple few nice folding models. Uh, what makes this unit really nice is this is a folding compact unit that is airline approved, cruise ship approved. Um, so basically all your types of transportation, you can take this on. It does have about a 265 pound weight capacity does get about nine and a half miles, up to nine and a half miles on a full charge. That's also depending on the terrain you're in, the incline, and also the weight of the user. But, you know, it is a chair that does fold up. The total weight of this chair is 49 pounds um, with the battery in it. You can pull the battery out. It weighs about 45 pounds. And if you wanted to be really extreme and pull the joystick, the seat, the battery's off, you can get it down to about 42 pounds. So that is all an op option to get the weight down on this unit. Um, right now, this current joystick set up on the right-hand side, but this joystick is able to be put on the left-hand side, so no matter if you're right or left-handed, you are able to put the joystick on either side. Um, the armrests on this unit do flip up. You have a little black tab here on the side. If you press that tab, you can flip the armrests up. Now, you do have about three to four inches that this armrest support sticks out, so it is not a flat, straight transfer if you were to use a board to transfer over, but um, it is does flip up so that you can kind of turn and pivot and get out from the side of the unit. Um, when you are traveling with this unit, you are able to take the joystick off. You can twist this tab. You do have two arrows here. You pull them apart and then you can take the joystick and carry it on with you if you are flying with this unit. Do make sure when you are putting this back together that those two arrows do line up. There is an importance because there are pins in there. You don't want to put them in sideways. You can fry the electronics and it will damage the unit. So do make sure those are uh, lined up when you are installing the joystick back again. Now you do have multiple different speeds on this unit and you have a battery gauge on here as well. This unit comes with solid tires. They're eight inch solid tires in the front. They're perforated solid tires in the back, about 12 inches. The perforated tires technology is just to give you a little bit of a softer ride. Um, the unit does come with, I think it's a 19 inch, and we're actually gonna physically measure it to see if that does measure right. So it's 19 inches in between the arms. The cushion you're sitting on is 17 inches wide by about close to 18 inches in depth. So 17 wide, 18 inches in depth, but you do have 19, just under 19 inches of usable space in between the armrest. The backrest is a little bit higher um, from the cushion to the top of the backrest is about 19 inches. So just to kind of give you perspective of what that is, I will sit in the unit in a minute. I'm six foot tall, 220 pounds. So you can kind of see how, how I sit and what I look like while in this unit. Foot plate, there's not really an adjustability on the foot plate, but it does flip up and down. Uh, it does look like they have a nice metal foot plate here. So it's not like it's a plastic plate that's gonna, you know, start to chip away or things like that. That is a metal foot plate that does flip up completely out of the way. Uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you this unit and basically how it folds up and then we're going to give you a couple other measurements. Before I do that, last measurement I'm thinking of here is the seat to ground height. That's kind of an important measurement a lot of people like to know. So the top of the seat to the ground is 20 inches. That's going to be pretty standard on a lot of power chairs across the market. 20 inches is kind of that standard height. Toilets and homes are 18 to 20 inches, so it's going to kind of give you a reference point of what that 20 inches is like. Um, but from here, the way you're going to fold this unit up is in the back of the unit. We always do recommend turning the power off. So on the joystick, we'll show you this in a video overlay. You're going to have a green button to turn the joystick on, red button to turn the joystick off, and then obviously a plus and minus. That's going to be for your speeds, and then it should make sense in the middle is the horn. Uh, that's going to be your horn on the unit. Back of the unit, you do have a pouch back here if you do want to carry your charger. Um, do you understand it's going to add a, an extra pound or two to the overall weight of the unit here? So back in the back of the unit, this looks like you do have this uh, red handle here. If you pull that red handle away from the unit, then you can go ahead and you can push this unit and fold this unit down, and then you can stand this unit up. Foot plate does, it, does gonna, it is going to self stand by itself. Foot plate does flip up. Highest point on this unit is going to be your joystick. So if you still have the joystick on the unit and you are standing this up, you're about 36 inches in overall height to the top of the joystick. Now do remember, you can take that joystick off and make this more compact. Now you're probably under 29 inches in overall height of the unit. If we're going to look at it depth wise, we're going to look at it this direction here. Farthest point looks like the bottom of your foot plate mount to the back of the seat. Give or take, you're about 22 inches. And then this direction here uh, looks like it's going to be wheel to wheel. Wheel to wheel is going to be your widest point. So I'll measure down a little bit lower, wheel to wheel. And wheel to wheel on this unit is going to be 24 and a half inches. So 24 and a half inches. Um, this one I said was about 21 inches this way. 
and then depending on with the joystick on or off, you're 36, and I believe it was about 29. So that's going to be what it's going to look like when it's folded up. Um, you are able to remove the battery from this unit. Um, I'll show you this in a video overlay, but the battery is located right underneath the seat. There is a pull pin that you pull, and then your battery will slide out. This is what your battery looks like. So when you do originally get your battery, I believe you have an on and off switch on here. I assume it's going to be in the off position. Make sure you do click it on, or you'll wonder why you don't have power to the unit. With most travel batteries, they do have an external charging port right here on the actual battery. Um, so that you can take this inside and charge this. You do not have to charge it while it's inside the unit. You are able to, if you want, when it's fully assembled, plug the charger right into the joystick. But if you want to leave this inside your vehicle and just take your battery inside, you are able to charge this separately. You don't need any separate docking device or things like that to charge it. You're able to do it all by itself right here. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna slide this battery pack back in. Putting it back in, you do not have to pull the pin um, to slide it back in, but you do have to pull the pin to remove the battery. So to unfold it, basically you can lay this kind of down and then you're just gonna pull on the back. And then once you kind of get it spread apart, push on the back, pull the backrest this way, and the unit will pull apart. So when your unit is folded up, um, they actually do have a strap over by the left kneecap underneath there. Um, you can take this strap and you can hook it to the back. Now it's gonna prevent it from opening up. That is built in standard. Now you do have to kind of take your thumb and then push this back off. It's not the easiest thing to do, especially with one hand, but uh, if you do have the ability to use two hands, you are able to easily do this. All right, so last thing we're gonna show you here before we go drive this outside. In the back of the unit, there is actually a couple shocks back here supposed to help with the ride. Um, you do have two motors in the rear back here. Uh, if you do go ahead and you push these red levers in the up position with your power off, there's not really much resistance on this unit. You would be able to use this kind of as a walking aid if you needed. Or if your battery ever dies and you don't want to carry this however long of distance you have to go, um, you can put these in neutral back here. But do remember these are electromagnetic brakes so the unit will not drive if they are in free wheel. They do need to be in that down position, both of them. And then if your power is on, you need to turn it off and turn it back on to reset the power. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go drive this outside, take it through the grass, kind of see how this compares to some other things on the market and I'll give you my feedback. So I kind of want to give you that reference of when I said earlier, I'm six foot tall, 220 pounds. You can kind of see how I sit in this unit. Um, I don't really see any issue. Obviously, I think if the foot plate was a little bit, it had a little bit of maybe uh, dust, uh, depth adjustability and height adjustability might be a little bit of a, uh, an upgrade to this, but they do have the travel uh, buggy City 2 Plus that does have those features. So that is something you're looking for. We do also carry an option that does have that. Um, but you can see overall, it's a very comfortable unit. It's got a nice high back support on it. You can see it goes pretty high up on my back. Um, I don't think the acceleration is as fast on this as you might have on a few other of the small travel units like this, but comfort wise, it is very nice. So now I think the ultimate test is gonna be, a lot of people do wanna take these to ballparks, see their grandkids play baseball, soccer, football, things like that. So we wanna kinda of go in some of this Bahia type Florida grass. Now it is dry, so this is not soggy grass. You don't wanna be taking this in really thick like St. Augustine, but I'm gonna give my personal opinion on kinda of over here in this grass, what it's gonna feel like now. So like I said, you can see that the, the acceleration is not fast. Um, you know, it's got enough power. Units like this, like this is gonna be similar to like the Carbon, um, like the Cricket. Other units like this that have these smaller uh, motors on the back, you are gonna lose some power when you begin to turn, but when you're going straight like most people would be, it's got plenty of power, so I don't really see any issue with that. Um, on some of the different terrains. Obviously, if you're gonna go down somewhere steep, make sure you're not leaning too far forward with your weight to tip forward. But overall, I mean, I think it's a great product for something at 49 pounds to be able to get up to nine and a half miles on a full charge and still support user weight of 265 pounds. I mean, I think this is gonna be a, a very viable option for you. So if you have any questions about this unit, feel free to give us a call. We'll be glad to speak to you. Hi, I'm Mark. And my name is Alex. We're co-owners of Mark's Mobility. I started this company in 1995. We sell many products, not just what you see in this video. If you have any questions or concerns, please call us at the number below at 800-677-6293. Thank you and have a wonderful day.